a minute. Um, I I want to request all of you to mute your um, speaker mics so that there would not be any sound recording. Inshallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are going to talk today about hustle and shouting of female in Islam. And um, just to let you know, we, me and Sister Nadia both are the student of Islam and we are learning ourselves. Sister Nadia, alhamdulillah, has done a uh, few um, uh, uh, hustles and shrouding, but I have not done. So I'm, we are, I'm just going to assist her. If you have any query, you can ask the questions at the end. And if you, we will not know the answers, we will inshallah try to research and find it out for you. Um, if there will be any um, mistake, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgive us, but just to, just to ensure that we are not any experts, so inshallah, whatever we have got and whatever the learning we are going to share today is in the light of Quran and Sunnah, inshallah only. Okay, so when we, we talk about um, anyone who deceased, we normally say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajeun. Um, I'm going to just you need to do is basically your camera um, after presentation your camera should be towards uh, sister Nadia because she is going to demonstrate the whole uh, whistle inshallah the process of whistle so let's do inshallah uh, what we are going to learn today first of all I want to talk about what we can and what we can't um, so um, uh, it's forbidden to mourn more than three days except the videos of course we cannot cry um we sorry we can cry but we can't wail uh, again if the umar reported holy prophet peace be upon him said mention what is good about your dad and refrain from speaking about the evils so when we talk about this part we talk also about if you are offering the ghusl of any deceased person and you find out some kind of um things which which is not good to um uh, to tell other people then it's it's a secret between you and that uh, person who has gone so please make sure that you are not going to tell those um uh, weaknesses those those small things which you might have found or witnessed during the ghusl to other people um like for example let's say oh the body was really um fragile it has a lot of marks or bruises or those kind of things try not to mention that a uh, show sabr uh, that's the main thing um message of allah uh, peace be upon him said how wonderful is the situation of the believer for all his affairs are the good if something good happens for him to him he gives thanks for it and if um and that is good for him if something bad happens to him he bears it with patience and that is good for him this does not apply to anyone but the believer so it's a muslim hadith 2999 we talk about etiquettes of uh, offering the ghusl. Whenever you are sporting in ghusl and shouting, again, I, I explained already, refrain to talk about it. If you offer the ghusl, it, it's important and it's um, advised that you do the ghusl after that as well, inshallah. And um, uh, let's um, talk about now about the death. It's, it's the reality. We all are going to face that, inshallah, eventually. None of us are eternal. Uh, so when we talk about that, this means that everyone who has been born has a day of death. Some people say we are very spooked out about this reality. We don't want to talk about it. But by saying it, or by, by, uh, by not saying it, we can't really hide away from this reality, which is going to happen eventually in any way. So we should not be scared of the death. What we should be scared of is that whether we are ready for the death or not, whether we are ready to uh, face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. Um, uh, we, we talk about two types time wusal which has been done mostly by the other people. One the wusal uh, when the newborn baby born and they, there is a first wash, shower or wash or whatever. That again, the family does. And this wusal, which is again, we, the deceased person is, uh, um, uh, can't do himself or herself and we do it. Um, it's it's wajib. So something which is uh, for the fire, sorry. So we or one of the one one of the person should be doing um, in the community. And the, if the community, none of 
the people in the community within the community would do it then it's it's um uh it's a sinful then let's talk about the by a little bit um science bioscience about the uh, about the deceased person before we go in the actual um hustle uh, demonstration when we talk about the uh, um, deceased um, person normally what happens is the heart stop pumping um we talk about that five to six hours within the once the person die body get really stubborn um it's not flexible anymore bacteria um uh, started building up and after a few days the body color start from green to purple and eventually black and it has a really toxic smell um after a few weeks eyes go out tongue swallow and then skins come off and then the actual skeleton left behind the reason of this to tell you is not to make you scared the reason of telling you is to make you aware that this is our body how fragile how weak we are yet we people seems to be um the most strongest and most powerful and we feel like we can conquer the world we we can do everything but actually just a saw a breathe if it goes away we will not be here anymore so we need to remember it all the time um okay so let's go to the now a little bit more about the um funeral inshallah so um before then that i want to tell you um uh um a uh, uh, qurani ayah uh, 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 um which is of surah bakara um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says perhaps you dislike something which is good for you and you like something which is bad for you allah knows and you do not know so sometimes we feel very upset of a person who goes away but we need to remember that allah knows and allah is the master planner he knows what, what when is the right time for us to go so always rem, uh, pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take me away in the um, in the best um part of iman inshallah high rank of iman and take me away on the kalma and shahada and that's the main thing inshallah um now let's talk about actual hustle so in hustle there are few things which we need items so water lots buckets and buckets of water if you need it the uh, um uh, lukewarm or hot water a little bit hot so that it will be better for you and the deceased body then soap or shampoo cedar leaves um uh, they are very much available everywhere camphor uh, which is a uh, beautiful smell um uh, and then cotton gloves and shrouding uh, with cedar leaves and camphor there is a hadith where has a uh, holy prophet peace be upon him uh, when hazrat zainab radiyallahu ta'ala who his own daughter passed away um he went to umay atiya and he uh, who was doing the usul uh, of uh, hazrat zainab and he went there and he said to her to put um cedar leaves in in the bucket while he, she was basically um doing the hustle and uh put camphor in the last time when she was you know doing the last hustle the last time washing the body so that the the smell of the beautiful smell of the camphor should be there why we do hustle why we need to do the hustle because this is the ultimate time of us meeting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go to our destiny so if, think about it if you are going to tomorrow for a holiday i'm sure you will be getting ready yourself you will be having a bath or a shower in the morning and um going in your presentable sit um way and also if you go for the interview you will be in the best presentable way similar to that we are now going to uh, someone who is the highest of the highest who is the king of the kings so we need to be prepare ourselves inshallah spiritually as well as physically now let's talk about what are the things which we need for the coffin uh, or shrouding there are three parts for the man 
and there are five parts for the women. There is the fifth part, which is not mentioned here, but I can explain to you. Um, orni, which is scarf, basically. It's a scarf, which is a square shape, which Sister um, uh, Nadia is going to demonstrate to you more in detail, but square shape, but we make it in triangle by folding it half. And then there's a kameez, there's izar, sinaban, lefafa. Uh, Sister Nadia is going to tell you all of it, but mainly what the, all of um, the main focus on this, this coffin should be, or shouting should be, it is unstitched. Uh, in, nowadays, in so many areas and so many shops, they are stitched coffins available. That's completely wrong. Uh, so we should be avoiding that. Uh, we are going to ultimately, we are going to inshallah uh, learn today or at least recite the dua for deceased and dua for janaza. But before then, now I'm going to uh, hand it over to Sister Nadia. And uh, if we can um, put her on the, yes, you can see her, inshallah. The, so, Sister Nadia, it's over to you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum Once uh, we have. Our sister comes towards us, the dead body of our sister comes towards us. We give her the ghusl. Um, How can we give her the ghusl? There are some material we, which we have need. And uh, this first thing, we have plenty of water. Then the second thing, kafu, then soap or shampoo, anything. And then we have cedar leaves. And there's a towel present there. We, um, to dry the body. Then we have gloves, um, we, we wear them, and then we wash the body. And then we have, um, there are, um, definitely we have a uh, cloth, uh, a colored cloth present with us, just to cover the body, so no one can see them. So first of all, when we have any um, sister come with us, and we start giving the, Whistle to the body, we cover the body, and then we cut the dress of the uh, dress of the body. And uh, in, during that time period, we continuously cover the body. We have we should have another one um, cloth present at the top of that, and two sisters hold that at the top of the body, so there is no chance to um, wash them or see them. Okay, uh, Nadia, can I just explain? So by now, I am hoping that you all understand that actual when the dead body comes in, nobody should be seeing the body. Actually, it's it's the imana of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's the it's the same like we don't want to reveal our body to anyone. It's their privacy, so we should not be unveiled there. So if you want to cut their clothes because they came from hospital or something, um, or they have a sudden death and they were wearing the normal clothes, so you need to cut it with the scissor. There should be one cloth of uh, which should be colored, bright color uh, sheet. Bright color sheet should be on the top of this deceased person. The reason is because if you put it a white cloth or white sheet, it, there's a danger that you can still see the body. So you'll be bright color. And this should be an old sheet you have. And there's another sheet on the top, which is holding by two people continuously on the top. The reason is because, for example, we are, while we are cutting the body, uh, the, the, while we are cutting the, sorry, the um, uh, clothes um, of the person, if we might can, if we might can have that unveil their elbow or maybe arm or something, the upper sh sheet should be covering the whole of the body. So there are two sheets going on on top of each other. One hold by two people and the other one, which is directly on the top of the person. Now, Sister Nadia is going to obviously take that sheet off. The reason because she is going to show you, otherwise you can't see that. Over to you, Sister Nadia. No. We should have a table which okay, is Okay, sorry, higher. Sister Nadia, just hold on. There is a question Sister Yasmin asked. So how many people are needed? So okay. how many? There are four or sometimes maybe there are five needed. It uh, depends on the uh, health of the lady. If she is um, heavier, she is we, we uh, feel difficulty to hold her, then definitely we need uh, two more sisters to hold that one uh, body. And two ladies definitely cover the cloth. They are uh, taking the so, cloth. So let me clear. So two ladies who are holding and two ladies who are doing the 
uh, the washing. Is that Russell? Yeah. So, uh, Sister Yasmin, your answer to your question is basically four. But if you need to carry a heavy uh, body because of the weight, then you might need the fifth one person to carry that. Yeah. And we will come back to that answer, inshallah, shortly. Yeah. We have a table on the uh, top of that. We did the whistle, and it's higher from the uh, head side. So the water is flowing uh, towards the uh, from the uh, foot. And uh, when we start giving the whistle, um, first of all, we take her a little bit in the sitting position. We press the belly slightly towards the belly, and the discharge, whatever press it inside uh, the body, is come out. And then we put a glove, and then we wash. Um, we give her the tahara with any cotton or any uh, uh, any cloth, and again we should not see the body. Okay, we give her the tahara during that that time period. We um, we put so much water on uh, her so that there is no um, bad thing pre uh, present there again. Okay, and then All right. Sister Nadia, yeah. oh, just uh, hold on. So again, coming back to the fact that we are going to put this deceased person on a board, uh, on a wooden board. Normally it's available uh, um, in any place where we, we have the whistles um, uh, preparation done or whistle availability in the mosques uh, here in UK or back in the country. So let's talk about how we do it. So we, we put some uh, the board in such a way that it's a little bit tilting head side up. And then it's like a stretcher almost, hospital stretchers. And then you are, or hospital's bed. So when you are going to have that, first of all, you need to obviously press the stomach so that any discharge uh, will be come out. And then you have to do the tahara, um, uh, having the gloves on and having the cotton wool. Uh, and as, uh, obviously, Sister Nadia has a simple gloves, but they should be the uh, the strong gloves, which, which means that you should not be feeling the body at all it's with the cotton very we, we need to respect the body as we we feel the respect uh, to be given um, so um, so we will then clean the uh, do the tahara and then obviously by at that time the second woman who is sitting standing with us has to throw a lot of water so that the, all the uh, nijasa all the um, uh, uh, you know whatever the extra bits were they would be gone and then and this is a clean body now left behind, inshallah. So, Sister Nadia, yes. Then the person who is giving the uh, whistle, um, starting giving vadu. And how can we start giving the vadu? We are not putting water inside the mouth. We only take a cotton and with a wet cotton and we only wash the mouth, okay? Only wash the teeth. Then the same procedure we done, we take cotton and we Take it like that. The shape is like this. First, we wash the nose from the right side, and then we wash the nose from clean the nose from the left side. After that, we wash the face like this. Okay. Then we start um, washing his right hand till the arms three times. Then left arm till the arms. After that, we um, shampoo or we wash. Her hair, um, her hair with shampoo slightly or gently. After washing the hair, we start giving proper bath. And we're giving the bath from the right side. First of all, we give, and again, the, there should be a cloth present at the top. Okay? We start giving the water, uh, dropping the water from the right side. And in first time, the water have the um, scissor leaves. Okay? And we giving the, uh, we drop the water at the um, Upper part, part, then we turn her towards left, and then we drop the water here. And then with any cloth, we rub it or wash it. The, the same thing we repeat at left side. First we do the uh, upper portion, then we uh, um, give the back towards the lower portion. This is the first time which we are doing this. The same procedure we repeat three times, five times or seven times in odd numbers, okay? Second time, we do drop the water here, then at the back side, 
then at the left side and then at the um, back side the same procedure once it's done three times five times or seven times now we start um drying the body we so start like just to explain that everyone that it's uh, why this is three times five times seven times because holy prophet peace be upon him has um uh, uh advised uh hazard Ume Atiya again uh at the time of the hazard zainab funeral zainab who funeral that please give her three times five times seven times whistle now in our country sometimes people um out of their uh innocence or ignorance think that it means that spread of the so so when a deceased person come in they have a whistle but then then they going away then they again do it we th that does not mean this yeah me the holy prophet hadith means washing the body three times five times seven times not the whole whistle process like uh you know uh, unveil the person do the do whistle again and do it again it's 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 like really um uh painful experience for the deceased person because he the soul of the body the spirit of the person is around uh, us they witness everything whatever happening so make sure when you are do giving them the whistle just give them the whistle like you give a whistle to your own baby because you need to respect that but or you need to feel respect for yourself so that's and obviously that include their privacy that include that we need to uh, keep their privacy not look they try to look their body or even if we come across unconsciously we should not be talk about it so everything has to be done in a very a uh, 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 very simple decent way the way we want to be respected inshallah so sister nadia yes and during the bath put some cotton in the nose and in the ears so that there is no water go inside the body and once the bath complete the last part the third time or fifth time when we drop the water on the body we mix the cold water with tough we mix kafu in that one um, water and after that we dry the body like this from the upper and the lower side after that we change we change that one clothes which is, which is present at the top of her so we are not doing like this what we can do we put the other one dry clothes on her okay and Always remember, there is another one cloth present at the top, which is which is holding by the uh, sisters. So we put the other one cloth at the top, and we slightly take it over. Okay. So now there is a dry cloth present at the top of the body. Now this is the time when we take her towards her bed, where we already have the coffin arranged. So how can we put her towards the uh, that one um, bed? Now what we can do, we take the cloth and we turn her a little bit towards right and we put it, we put the cloth like this once and then when we give her that one side, automatically the cloth comes from here out. Now what we can do, we with the help of two or three sisters or if the body is heavy then we uh, as mehram um, persons to take her, to hold her, and we take her towards the bed. Okay. okay. Now, just to explain, Sister Nadia, because um, you are looking at the body just like that because sister nadia doesn't have a sheet on the top but just remember all the time the actual body has a full sheet on the top so she is a cover body so make sure uh, uh, the first the priority would be women if there is a, even a heavy body you have to carry some of the women you can call extra women and they can do it but if this is a too um uh, big person and they, that is unbelievably uh, impossible for people women to carry then obviously mehram and this is the way sister nadia now show you that's how the body look like actual body yeah um uh, sister nadia has explained to you that in the last part 
it, we need to put camphor in it. The camphor is a beautiful smell, which has a, uh, a holy prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has advised us to use on the deceased bodies. So yes, Nadia. Okay. Now I'm showing you how can you make the uh, how can we erase the coffee basically? First of all, we put three strips um, of clothes at the bottom, like this. We put the wrapping sheet at the top of that. There should be a wrapping sheet. Okay, we put it at the top of that. Okay, and do you know what the wrapping sheet means? If you remember, if you have ever come across any deceased person, normally their coffin is or their shrouding is looking like a, almost a toffee, a kind of toffee or a wrap, which is from the top, it's a tie knot. And then obviously from the feet side, it's a tie knot. That's the wrap which Sister Nadia is showing, yeah, at the moment. Now, this is the shirt, which I'm showing you. It's again not stitched form. It's a shirt. We cut it just like a T-shape. Look at this. Okay. From the upper side, this is the portion where uh, it's just like this shape. And the straight line, which you are watching right now, it's like which we have the button um, on the neck. It's just like that. We put it here. Okay, so, so just to let you know, um, as I explained to you before, there are people, there are coffins or shroudings available who are stitched. But what we are going to talk about, um, uh, what we are talking today is according to uh, Quran and Sunnah, the shrouding should not be stitched uh, shrouding. Yeah, so it has to be unstitched, um, and uh, basically it's only a cut on the top where the head goes in and uh, or neck goes in basically and there is a cut for the neck yeah so it's a like a t shape cut that's all we need to do then this is a azar okay this it, it covers the belly uh, person's belly till the um, end of the feet uh, till the feet okay so we till the, till the feet or till the knee sister nadia till the knee or till the feet to the feet, end okay. of the knee, okay. uh, uh, started of the feet. Okay. Starting, okay. Full, full body, yeah, okay. okay. So now, first thing, the um, strips, then the wrapper, then the um, shirt. At the top of that, we have um, the other. There are two extra things which we have with ladies. One is the chest covering. We start from the starting of the chest till the Thighs, okay. Knees. Cover. Knees. To the knees. So it now we put it on the other at the top of the other. We put that one. Another one thing which covered the basically head. This is the head scarf. It's a square shape uh, cloth. We cut. We give it the shape like this, the triangular shape. And now these are the five things which are um, which we need. For the coffin of a lady. Now, once we put all these things here, we take our, our sister towards the bed with the help of any other lady, different ladies. We put her like this here. Now, again, we do not uncover the body right now. But just to show you, I explain you that. Now, we take it like this. And then again, when we turn it here, automatically, automatically the lower cloth is going out. Yeah, so we can take off the sheets. Obviously, not the top one sheet on first. First, the lower sheet would go. The top sheet is at the moment on the top of it. So actual. At, Sister Nadia uh, has this body straight to show you, but actually there would be a colored uh, a piece of cloth or a sheet all the time covering this sister. So now we cover the, uh, first of all, the chest, uh, chest covering. We put it from the left side, we cover it here. This is the left side. First we wrap the left side very tightly. Okay, they, so there is no chance to open it. Then we put the right side on the top of that. So once it covers, 
Then we we'll do the same thing with the azar. Look, once we tightly curl it, then we put the right side on the top. Again, we tightly cover that one. Now at the top of that, we put the shirt, the kameez. So like this, again, first the left side, and then the right side. Here. Now, because uh, it's a doll, the, the hands are definitely loose here. Now, we wrap the scarf at the top of the head, just like this. We turn it towards the right, one portion, and the second portion towards the left. So it looks like that. Just to let you know, with the washing of the hair, sisters hair need to be separated in three parts. Is that right, Sister Nadia? Yes. Yeah. What, yes, we, we uh, divide it into three, three portions. Yeah, so so all of them has to be at the back or sometimes two of them. If you want to uh, put them at the back, it's optional. And if we uh, want, then we put two of them uh, at the front side and one portion at the back side. Okay, And that all will be covered eventually, yeah. yeah. They are all covered. Now we cover it. Then this is the last sheet, which is the wrapping sheet. We put it like this. We put, cover it tightly. And now we tie with the help of this strip. Now, it, its shape is just like a toffee now, if you can see. So we tie from the center as well. And this is the point. We are not tied right now. Because uh, uh, you know every person wants to see their uh, beloved ones. So we open that one right now. And when this is the time to go um, towards the uh, Janaza time, then we cover that one as well, okay? And we try it from here. So this is the proper way of uh, giving the bath and, and giving the coffin to the our loving ones. Sister Nadia. So what you have seen just now is basically us uh, in a way, if I can explain to you, it's almost like a, we do the ghusal. Or we, actually the voodoo, the voodoo bit is exactly almost the we, how we do the voodoo. We do three time uh, rinse the mouth, three time rinse the nose, three time wash the face, three time right hand uh, arm, left arm. Obviously then we have the masa, which we call masa, but obviously they have to wash their uh, head. And um, then we have the, uh, in the ghusal, like we do it, but, um, rinsing the um, uh, rinse ourselves with the water. That's exactly what has happened. What we need to be, and obviously everything started from right um, uh, when we are doing the washing the body. But when we are uh, putting the clothes on, everything has to be from the left hand side, and obviously the last bit come from the right hand side. So this is the way. Uh, this is a very simple method. What we should not be putting is we should not be putting our rituals into it, the cultural beliefs into it, because lots of things are happening. Oh, women should be doing this. Women should be doing that. Or oh, if she has the, I don't know, if she had the head color, how we are going to take that off, uh, pubic hair, how we are going to take that off. No, we should not be doing that. So we need to be the, um, uh, we need to, uh, leave the body as it is only the thing if they have the nail varnish or nail polish that that has to be removed before whistle because obviously otherwise you they the whistle would not be accepted so that's the only thing we need to be doing it uh, but otherwise it's a very simple um, uh, procedure um, just be mindful of the uh, let's talk about the shrouding Holy Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, said to Sahabas that give a good gift of kafan or shrouding to your 
uh, friends. What the good gift mean or what a good coffin mean? Doesn't mean that we I'm going to purchase a good coffin from Cardi or I don't know, the big companies. No, that's not going to happen. It means a simple cloth, but a, a, a clean uh, uh, coffin, basically. So that's what we needed, yeah? without any nijasa and then obviously we when me and you for your and my reflection is that today when you are going to finish this uh, session if you go and open your closet i'm sure including me you must have at least more than 20 uh, outfits in the more than sorry more than 20 outfits in our um, in our um, you know uh, cabinet but what we don't have is a uh, a shrouding a final uh, um, uh, for our destination, the piece of cloth which we needed. So I think what for us, the most important thing is that we need to, and in our Urdu session, we have talked about it, that we need to have one, maybe a shrouding ready, a coffin ready for us, um, uh, any one of us. So if let's like, say I will die, and I need the shrouding or coffin, you you would have that ready and you can just give it to me. And that's a gift. That means a gift, isn't it? That's the ultimate gift you can give to your uh, any friend, yeah? Um, so that's that's what we needed. When, um, uh, obviously, this uh, these two sessions we have run was a Sadaqai Jariya for my sister who passed away last year and my dad. Uh, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannatul Fidos. What we have a live experience of this, where in the COVID time there was no shrouding coffins available around, and then what happened is basically, um, uh, uh, Sister Adi obviously because she was there, she was asking for the people. She went for three different areas, like a uh, different approach, three different. Uh, people to ask for how to get the hold of coffin and they was very difficult to arrange that and then obviously then comes to the coffins or shroudings who are again going back to the rituals and wrong ways of stitched coffins where there is like a pajama kind of um or trouser kind of uh, stitch cloth is available which is not allowed so then it's you you end up in a very dilemma big dilemma that you are sending your loved one your your ultimate um someone who you loved most and yet you don't uh, you don't have the uh, sorry you don't have the um uh, you don't have prepared before because we don't we don't think about that people can go just like that today when i'm talking to you my one of the very beloved uh, friend her husband passed away which we which is just a shock but that happens to you and me you might hear about me tomorrow and i might hear about you tomorrow but one has any one of us has a coffin radio shrouding ready in the uh, in our uh, in our wardrobe no we don't have that so inshallah just make a that we should be doing it we should be um uh, we should be inshallah purchase one and don't don't do a will or a wasiya and say oh this is ultimately for me because there is no name written on it so for example if i need more and before than you then you might can help me and likewise if i you need before me then i might can help you because at that time i think my my friend need covering and that covering that covering comes from me is the biggest gift I, gift I can ever help uh, my friend and this is what we needed the most before we going away this is uh, the two duas one is for um uh, the this is the funeral one yeah uh allahumma fili hayina wa mayitina wa shahidina wa ghaibina wa sagirina wa kabirina wa dhakarina wa unsana allahumma man ahyahtahu min minna fa ahyahi ala al-islam wa man tawaffaytahu minna fa tawaffahu ala al-iman allahumma la tahrimna so it's a beautiful meaning. Allah forgive our living and our deaths, those present and those absent, those young and our old, our males and our females. O Allah, whom among us you keep alive, 
then let us such a life be upon Islam. And whom among us you take unto yourself, then let such a death be upon faith. Amen. So, I mean, oh Allah, do not deprive us for, of his reward and do not let us stray uh, uh, for after him. Such a beautiful wording. So I think this is uh, a funeral prayer, but this is a prayer for all of us, actually, in, in, in a way. It's a complete dua for the people who are doing even the funeral time, uh, witnessing that, because it's for themselves as well. And then uh, there's another beautiful um, uh, dua, which is a hadith of, of say, uh, Muslim. Um, and this is this is for for a deceased one when he goes away and it's a beautiful meaning oh Allah forgive her and have mercy on her and give her strength and pardon her be generous to her to cause her entrance to be white and wash her with the water and snow and the hail cleanse her of her, her transgression as white cloth is cleansed of stain give her a boat better than her home and family better than her family and her a, a husband better than her husband and enter her in paradise and protect her from the punishment of the grave and the punishment of the help by again a beautiful complete dua so let's make a niya which we have done in urdu session as well that before the end of this ramadan let's make a niya of the, the to learn these two duas because ultimately when you are your your beloved uh, one will go away you will not be sending them gifts of the cakes and the flowers and the gold and the diamonds. No, you are going to send them these two duas or all the other duas and all the sadhgai jariya you can do. So inshallah, make a niyata by the end of the this Ramadan, we can learn these duas, inshallah. Any question, please you can text us and we can answer. Or um, if you don't know the answers, then obviously we will be um, uh, we will be uh, researching and sharing with you as I have explained to you in the beginning. And uh, in the end, we will inshallah pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us all um uh, from this world on the on in iman and in the higher rank of jannah the people who have gone away the muslims may allah give, bless them jannah and um, uh, keep, keep our ending the best ending uh, um oh allah make my accounting an easy accounting Oh Allah, I ask you for the, a good end, inshallah. Allahumma uh, um, minna. Uh, if we have done any mistake, uh, please forgive us. As we said, we are just a stu just two students who are learning Islam. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.